but I think about it before guessing that uh, yes and no would be the answers to that. Uh, when I was, geez, when was it? Before the millennium, anyway, um, I was studying to do hairdressing, and uh, a bunch of us, um, we all thought it would be a great idea to go out and get a tattoo. So I did. Um, I'm not ashamed of my tattoo, um, and I don't feel it did any harm. But my consultant hit the roof um, when he saw it um, because there was a risk, a slim risk, but a risk that it could have got infected and the infection could have gone to my heart. So he was pretty furious, but no, that was nothing I, I wouldn't have done myself, nothing I wouldn't stop anybody else doing either. I mean, as long as you're careful. You go somewhere that's clean. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with it. You can solve some might. So it's up to you whether you want to or not. Um, but personally, I don't see anything wrong with it. And if it wasn't for the fear of my consultant hitting the roof, I would have carried on. Well, yeah, it does. It affects me in so much of the fact that I can't do the things that I want to do with my kids. I can't run for hours. I can't cycle like crazy with them. You know, if we go for walks, it's a steady walk. It is limiting still. It's not as limiting as it was, but it is still limiting. Um, and it's, it's one of those things. I don't think it's ever going to get any easier. As for medication, um, I used to be on a hell of a lot before the Fontan redo. Now um, I'm only taking warfarin and that's pretty much only because of the blood clots which led to my stroke. Um, so yes and no, I used to take a lot of medication, um, beta blockers and things like Sotalol. Uh, lisinopril, ramipril, um, things like that I used to take. I wasn't very good at taking them um, and most of the time I would try and avoid taking them. In a way that's probably left to my health situation at the moment. So if you are on any medication um, don't take it lightly, take it properly and trust that your doctor knows what he's doing. They won't put you on it if you didn't need to be on it. Okay, I've learned that lesson and now I take my medication. Um, it's, it's not worth not doing properly. I think I've answered that several times. Um, I personally see it as a burden, there's nothing good to come out of it, um, not for me anyway, I don't, it's hard to see something that limits you in such a way um, to be a blessing. The blessing for me with my CHD was when it was, when I had my original Fontan, that was the blessing for me, and that blessing lasted 15 years. It wasn't bad, and it was it was like having a second lifetime. It, it really was the the little kid who had all those problems. To me, um, he died on that operating table, and what was left was this young adult who was stronger, faster, more confident able to do all the stuff that had been missing and that's that that's the blessing for me so I guess in a way it's, it's a burden and a blessing I hate having it I really do but it's made me who I am and those experiences that those two lifetimes that I've had a chance to lead 
I would not have either of them because I needed one to have the other. Um, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to say because of my wife really. Before I was with her I didn't think about it. I didn't I didn't care. I didn't even know that there was a term for people who had this problem. In a lot of ways I thought I was the only one. Um, and that was that. I put it to the back of my mind. I didn't think about it. I didn't think about anybody else who might have it. I know it sounds awful, but when I go, when I went to hospital visits, other people in the waiting room, because I personally wanted to block it out of my head, everybody else that was there was blocked out. It's it's weird. My my coping strategy for stuff is just to shut down. So that's how I did it until I met my wife and she's helped me evolve and to a certain point embrace it. I never would have done this. I never would have talked to anybody about my experiences or fears or anything like that. It just wasn't something I thought of. So I thought of there actually being groups for people with CHD wouldn't have occurred to me. My knowledge of CHD UK, um, Somerville Foundation, things like that, the groups on Facebook and etc. I wouldn't look for them now if I was on my own. But because I'm with a wonderful, supportive woman, um, then I've got caught up in her enthusiasm and passion for it. Rather than feeling like I have a need to know what's out there, she's towed me along and now I want to get involved. I want to do things. I want to help as best as I can. I, I still don't know what I can do or what I should do. So to sum up, how do I know about the CHD related groups on Facebook? I didn't. My wife did. Um, but because of her, I now know.